Well, this is the week the handheld press is five years old, which is just amazing. I did not think that we would get this far, but I honestly don't think I really planned a great deal. I put a rudimentary business plan together and then we just charged into action. So five years later, hmm, what are the highlights? So I think the first highlight was realising just how many people I knew who could help me. And that was marvellous. I had a massive network um, from publishing, from editing, from academia, and just interesting and useful people I knew, like my cousin's ex-husband was a designer of typefaces, and he did our logo for us. And then I met someone who was a designer who polished it up, and she's remained our designer. So one thing led to another. And just discovering that, that power and strength in the the network I already had was just terrific. And that really, really gave me a boost. I thought, yeah, we can do this. I have got the resources and that's just great. When we first published the books, the first two books came out in October, 2017. And I put an advert for one of them in a specialist magazine thinking, well, readers are gonna to want to know about this new edition. And blow me, somebody actually ordered the book. We had our first order through our website shop from someone I didn't know, I'd never heard of, who lived in America, who decided she wanted a copy of our book. And it was the most exciting thing, working out how to wrap it and the, the nuances of what kind of packing paper and how to avoid plastic, which is really not difficult to avoid plastic publishers out there. You've just got to buy the right material. But to have that first order, Yes, we can sell books. This was great. About a year later, I went to BristolCon in October 2018 to present our, our November book. I forget when it came out. Anyway, it was Sylvia Townsend Warner's collection of fairy stories, um, Kingdoms of Elfin, which Neil Gaiman had endorsed for us. I mean, that was a highlight in itself. Maybe I should give that separate category. Someone I know is a friend of Neil Gaiman's and Neil Gaiman sent me an email one morning saying, I'm so pleased you're reprinting Kingdoms of Elfin. Can I do you an endorsement? Yes, please. So we've got his words all over the cover. Anyway, I went to BristolCon to present the book. So I took part in a panel of reading. So we had an author reading the bits of his book. The audience were very quiet and, you know, appreciative. And that was good. And then I stepped forward and said, well, this isn't my book. I'm the publisher. Let me tell you who Sylvia Townsend Warner is. And I'm going to read you a bit of one of her stories. And I started reading. I had a lot of practice reading because I brought up two children and we read a lot of stories aloud to them. But this time you could hear a pin drop. It was amazing. And then one of those daughters who was running the stall for me elsewhere in the convention complained bitterly when I finally made it back to the stall that she'd been rushed off her feet because everybody was piling in to buy Kingdoms of Elfin after my reading. And that was amazing. I know I can perform in front of an audience. I've been a lecturer. I love talking to big groups of people and little groups too. But to think I can do this and I can sell books, I can show people how amazing these works are just by reading them. And this will persuade them to buy the book from us. That was amazing. I just loved that. At about the same time, this is still back end of 2018, I was working on What Not, which was Rose Macaulay's novel, which almost everybody had forgotten, but because I'd done research in it, I was able to retrieve it from the depths. And I'd made a really amazing discovery with the help of John Clute by finding the three pages that had been um, taken out of the first edition and then replaced with rubbish because the original publishers were scared of a libel account. So I, I got this um, revised edition together and I knew that, yeah, yeah, it was an influence on Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. And yes, it was possibly an influence on 1984. But because I have been immersed in Rose Macaulay research as an academic for so long, and then burying myself in it to get this edition together, I completely forgot of the news value of this. So I sent the information to the trade press and to my mild surprise, but pleasure, um, one of the journalists and bookseller, emailed me saying, can I see a PDF of um, whatnot, please? And I thought, well, of course, you're obviously interested. Terrific. So I sent it. The next thing I know is a Monday morning and my phone is leaping up and down with notifications because there's a story in The Guardian about whatnot, influence on Brave New World, possible influence on 1984, and they've published our 
link in the edition. So everybody all over the world is buying the book. I had to reprint it two more times before publication. So that was in December. Didn't get published till March. And people were buying it hand over foot. That was a highlight of highlights. That was the best thing that had happened to us. It was just so exciting. Something a little eh, negative, but also quite good and powering, I think. A few months later, I was getting the print run sorted for a book we brought out in May 2019. And the book arrived and it's until then, it had been so exciting when the books arrived from the printer. You rip open the, the box carefully. You don't score it with scissors. And I opened the box and went, oh, no, because the cover was one of these what we call um, flap covers. So they have a flap that wraps in on the inside and the cover is white. The spine is, in this case, dark green or sort of olive green and the flap is olive green. But somehow the measurement of the spine on the cover was not correct. So the green of the spine was leaked, was sort of folded over onto the edge of the white and the white was folding over onto the edge of the flap. It was just the wrong size. Somebody had made a mess with the, with the measurements and I was so upset because it just made my heart plummet and I thought we've printed a thousand of these. Oh no, so much money. So I rang up the printer and they said, oh no, it can't be us. Ugh. And I said, I'm afraid it is you because look, and I sent them photographs and they said, okay, can you send us copies? So I sent two copies and I asked my distributor not to distribute the books, to keep them locked up. And to my great pleasure, the printer said, yes, actually it is our fault because they outsourced, they subcontracted the cover to a different public, to a different printer because of capacity. And that subcontracting printer had not taken the right measurements. So to their enormous credit, they reprinted the whole book properly at their own cost. And all I had to pay for was pulping the 1000 copies that did get through. And that was a bit of a shame to pulp it, but um, it was an empowering lesson. It was quite a blow in the stomach. And even now I still think, oh, is the book going to be perfect? Oh, good. Thank goodness it is perfect. And I'm still on good terms with the printer. They did the right thing and I did the right thing by persisting. And that was a highlight because it showed me I've got to stick to my guns and I can't accept quality less than that which I want to sell to the public. Um, US publicity. So towards the end of 2019, we had signed a distribution arrangement in the, in America, well, North America. And that was extraordinary. And I went to America for a sales conference and I was utterly shell shocked and probably jet lagged all the way through, just not understanding the, 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 um, the immensity of the big step we'd taken. And it was really strange and I'm still kind of struggling with that in a way. But because we had US distribution, our books started to appear in America. And in the middle of 2020, suddenly my daughter sent me an Instagram post saying, look, look, look. And she, idly browsing, had spotted one of our books, Zelda Fitzgerald, Save Me the Waltz, which we published in early 2019, was featured in an Instagram post by Emma Roberts, who, as you know, is an extremely famous and massively followed actress. Her social media following is colossal. So I went, oh, that's that's rather good. Wonderful. So I sent it to my US contacts and they went, incandescent explosion of volcanic wonderfulness. This is just amazing. The reps will love it. That was supposed to be quite good. Um, that kind of exposure is good. I mean, Save Me the Waltz is selling so well because American universities and colleges are teaching it. But that extra boost of a social media star, an actress saying, look, this is a good book and I'm featuring it. That was excellent. And the other really good thing from America was getting two of our books reviewed in the Washington Post, completely out of the blue. Didn't expect that. Not sure it actually made a difference in sales, but it was amazing. Amazing to find it there. That was so good. Um, last year, our 2018 book, A Drift in the Middle Kingdom by Jan Jakob Slauerhoff, translated by David Mackay. It was shortlisted for the Vondel Prize for translation and it became the runner up, which is a huge accolade to David, who is a wonderful, wonderful translator. And we are just so pleased. We've now got a little yellow strip announcing runner up Vondel on our catalogue because we're just so proud of it. We are publishing a near prize winner. Ongoing successes. This is not so much of a highlight as a high wave. It's 
two of titles in particular just keep selling. They are the gift that gives on giving. The first one is Women's Weird, which we brought out in, let me get, I think 2020. I'm losing track now. Five years is a long time when he published a lot of books. Women's Weird was our first anthology of weird fiction. Short fiction, classic weird fiction by women, and it just keeps selling. It doesn't stop selling. It's a success. It's wonderful. And the other one is Business as Usual, which is a book that I rediscovered. I wrote the introduction and it too is a really big success. It just keeps selling and people love it because it's a word of mouth success. They give it to their mothers and their sisters and their daughters and, and it just keeps ha being handed around. And it's this kind of crossover appeal that I think is really, really good for handheld because other books like Personal Pleasures, we have a crossover, we have a big success for the anticipated market, which is people who love quirky essays about fun things that happened in the 1930s and Rose Macaulay's wit. That title had an amazing crossover success in the Church of England and Anglican market because Rose Macaulay was a staunch Anglican. And there's quite a few essays in that collection with resonance for Church of England goers. And then additionally, Jane's Country Year by Malcolm Savile. We thought it'll do well with the countryside nostalgia market. People that love that novel as children um, or people who want to read about 1940s countryside. It also had a big success with the Malcolm Savile fandom, which is big, and the Shropshire people, because it's not based in Shropshire, but Malcolm Savile is a Shropshire writer. So it's about English rural life. So that crossover appeal, a, a boost in sales and a boost in the market where we didn't expect, that is a real highlight. And then finally, connected to Business as Usual. So Jane Oliver, who co-wrote Business as Usual, I was, when I was writing the, um, the introduction for that book, I was researching her life with the help of her nephew, David Murdoch, who has been hugely important for this. And he kept telling me about uh, John Llewellyn Rees, who was Jane Oliver's husband. And I thought, yeah, John Llewellyn Rees, other writer. And later on, I thought, he's a writer. Why do I know about him? So I have found his books. I had to go to the London Library for one. And the other one, which is far more rare, I managed to get through interlibrary loans. And these were the kind of reading experience. You sit down and you can't move. You are gripped. You cannot stop reading until you finish the book because it's so good. And you're, you're trembling with the excitement and the tension of the plot. So it was unquestionable. We were going to publish these books. That was a highlight. So I hope we have five more years of excitement like that. Want to see more from us? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to click like, subscribe or new content alert.